Hey guys, JH, welcome to practice day. Okay. Carrying on with channel lock. And today, I'm going to title this video, Channel Lock for Dummies. And I don't mean that in a, any disparaging manner. Just like, you know, those publications that come out, Computers for Dummies, Home Plumbing for Dummies, Home Mechanics for Dummies, Gardening for Dummies. Well, this is Channel Lock for Dummies. And what it is, guys, is, is, is a very simplistic overview uh, approach to the core principles of, of Channel Lock. Now what we have to do is just apply the core principles, the base principles of channel lock. However you do that guys, it doesn't matter. The core principle is that we swing from the side of the body as an intention. We can get as much of that, that reality of application by setting up with the, with the ball way back there. Now the whole idea of this golf swing is to overcome the formal flaw that I believe has been in the golf swing since time immemorial. And that is the, for, the forward ball position. Anytime you've got to get your arms to cross the centre of your body, there's a propensity that the, that the club is going to change its path delivery line to the, to the ball. Now it's happened with every player that's ever played this game. There hasn't been one player, not Hogan, probably Mo Norman and, and maybe Count Yogi but uh, but certainly not Hogan uh, Ho Hogan you know predominantly ruled out the left side of the golf course but he still hit his share of balls left so he didn't have a golf swing that would rule it out entirely but this golf swing does guys and why does it do that it does it because the club can only travel one way one direction and that is into out so it means that the golf ball will always start a little to the right of the target line. How much depends on the shoulder alignment and how much you offset, uh, compensate that. For example, if we just set up at 90 degrees to the ball, to the target, here's our target line here, I'm at 90 degrees. And I've got the ball back here. Now, I'm going to be, clearly because of the nature of a normal golf swing, I'm going to be, by the time I get to the ball, I'm going to be tracking into out significantly. Significantly. So if I'm in a, a 90 degree position here to the target line here, body, shoulders on line, target, and my target is there, and my club is coming in from here to there, I'm going to hit the ball there which is for right-handed to the right of my target line. That's just elementary geometry. And that ha comes about, guys, because of this back ball position. Just, 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 just have a look at this. There, I go here, I'm coming into the ball, closed shoulders because the ball's back there. That, that basically, you know, creates that attack line on the ball and the closed shoulder line because it's back there. Now if I just move it up here, I have a propensity to do this, to get to the ball. Very hard to keep my shoulders closed and get to a forward ball position. It's nearly impossible. All the time. You can do it occasionally, but you won't do it all the time. That's the reality. So going back to the, to the previous point, if I'm 90 degrees here, and I've got the ball back here, and I want to deliver the golf club to the ball back here, the club's going to be tracking in here, so it's going to be starting out there. So what we have to do is take that starting out there and bring that starting out there to here. That's it, guys. That starting out there is always going to be in the golf swing, theoretically. Well, well technically and practically, it's always there because we're coming from into out. So we have to take, take that starting out there here it is, this is the dummy's approach, or the dummy's explanation. This is always going to be here, I'm out there. So what I have to do guys is get that to here. See that? 
Let's do that again. Here we are, 90 degrees to the line. I'm here, I'm firing it in there. That is there. I have to take that to here. Now what did I have to do to get that? I had to align everything further left. Let's do that again guys. Here we go. Here we are. We're 90 degrees. Target line. Do it this way. Here we are, 90 degrees. Body line, target line. Ball way back. I'm going to be going here because of the closed shoulders and the back ball position. I have to take that to here. Now how did I get that to here? I turned all this around. I compensated. That's what it is guys. <clears throat> and you have to work out that amount of compensation that you need to apply in your golf swing. You will see now that I don't have that original pre-mechanical um, geometry structure that I used to have when I first started with, uh, with channel lock. In that, that was back here. I was here, I used to turn my feet, then I'd step away, and then I would back cock. Because I had my shoulders pointing here, and then I back cocked onto here. Now I can bring up my feet as much as I like after I back cocked. Here. Because the orientation of the body hasn't changed. The foot line is not going to change that. That's the, that's the simplistic part of it, guys. Here we are. Here. 90 degrees here. Here. We cock that here. If we're going to attack it here from that back ball position, here from a square on position, we've got that. Because that is parallel to the shoulders, and the shoulders are closed. So the club's swinging parallel to the shoulders, but it's into out. So I've got to take that line there. I've got to take that to here. Still the same, but I just bring it around. That never changes. This orientation will never change, guys. That shoulder requirement of being closed and that back ball position and the five o'clock nose is what creates the channel and what creates the channel lock in, in channel, in channel lock. Here. I'm over here, I back cock. But I can bring this up. Doesn't matter once I'm in this position here. And just hit some shots and if you just blow it 40 yards right and it's dead straight every time just keep turning around to the left of the dress before you if you're right-handed before you back cock your shoulders back to square and and as you come around the ball should 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 stop going there there and should start to come back to here which is our target line that's that really is even though it's complex guys it's simplistic because you've only got one line of attack and that is into out and it's relative to where your shoulders are pointing as to how much into out you will have relative to your, your target line and again the real emphasis here has always got to be in channel lock in that in the, in the when I fire that golf club it's firing at that golf ball there which is the feeling of I'm going to fire a straight right but you know because you've made that compensatory uh, adjustment that is the feeling of firing it right and you know by practice and from adjustment and modification relative to your your, your um, differentials that you're not going to fire it right. You're going to feel like you're going to fire it right, but you won't. For a right-hander. You won't do it. Because you've proved it in practice. Now guys, another point I want to make is that when, you, when you're practicing this, 
when you when you're burning it in, and one of the guys uh, said that he he just played with it. It's just a post I got this morning. He said that he played and hit a lot of good shots, but but lost it and didn't trust it on the golf course. Well, guys, the golf course orientation is something you've got to build here. What you've got to do when you practice with this golf swing is practice with the diligence of the importance of a golf course shot and the targeting. Every shot you hit here has to have exactly the same um, importance that it would that would prevail on the golf course. It's got to have that level of importance. And if you don't practice that level of importance here when you're practicing channel lock, you won't get the correct orientation for the, the alignment and the trust. You won't build the trust because you don't need the trust when you're practicing. You've got to build the trust when you're practicing so you can have the trust on the golf course. A buddy of mine sent me a um, uh, some apparel from uh, Royal County down in Ireland just recently. I only got it yesterday. And really nice shirts, top quality stuff. This is actually my Royal County down uh, cap, which I'm going to wear till it till it falls apart. It's going to be my favourite cap because it's been given to me by a very dear friend. Um, so I'm going to wear it until it uh, till it falls to bits. It'll be an old favourite cap. Remember, Tiger wore that that sweat ridden cap for a I don't know, for about a month. Looked like I'd been dragged behind a car and he, and he just wore it until it basically became too, too uh, scruffy. Well, I'm going to do that. But I don't have to please Nike as a sponsor. But what was on one of those apparels on the sweatshirt that he sent me was a label. It was a very high quality shirt. But on the label it had, and it was a sweatshirt. So it was relative to training and practice. And the line, and I'm sure it was from the Roman Spartans. It looks like a like a like a quote from 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 Roman times and it had the more you sweat during practice the less you will bleed in battle now what a line what a line and the more you sweat here in practice the less you'll be leaking oil on the golf course and bleeding away that that good score that you had going the more you sweat in practice, the less you will bleed in in um, what was it in combat. Yeah, fantastic line. Okay, so I digress. Okay, guys. So the importance is that you must here orientate here when you're practicing. You must orientate here for the importance of a golf course shot if you don't you can't build the trust so every shot that you have here there's got to got to be as important here as it is on the golf course and grade yourself on it and orientate yourself and build a commitment to your practice shots i got to tell you guys when i practice i never hit willy-nilly shots you'll see me hit multiple shots but i can assure you every time i i set up to the golf ball i've got a specific target in mind or a specific uh, left or right of the target that where I want to hit the ball. I do it every time. And I've done that since 1986 when Jack Nicholas said he never hit a shot in practice without total reason or commitment. He said, why would you do that? That's not practicing it. That's practicing not having commitment. And that makes so much sense. And I've never deviated from that since that day. So, so guys, make sure Okay, to, to, to go over, to reiterate, um, channel lock for dummies. Here we are here. If we're 90 degrees here, and we've got that back ball position, and, and we back cock our shoulders so we can get in this channel beside our body here, we're going to be firing it there. And that's, for a right-hander, is right of the target line. So that firing of it there has to be brought around to there. That's all it is, guys. And you have to work that out yourself by hitting shots. And again, as, as a dummy's guide or a simplistic overview, talk about dummies, I'm a dummy. It took me 40 years to find this. 
there was a formal flaw in the golf swing that should have been obvious to someone like me that has the type of analytical brain that I have. That there should have, it, the light should have come on and it took me 40 years to work it out. So I should have a tag around here with the world's biggest dummy. Because I knew there was a formal flaw. I thought there has to be a way to corral the golf club to make sure it goes to the golf ball the same direction every time. And this is it with the back ball position. There's never been a golf swing like this, guys. Anybody can say whatever they like. Nobody has ever swung the golf club with this type of geometry. No one. No one. This is a first. This is a paradigm shift of incredible proportion. And I'm still totally convinced that if, even if you've got a great player, even someone like Tiger Woods, for Tiger Woods to have a golf swing where he knew he could only have one miss, and that would be that way, what would that do for his confidence? What would that do for his confidence? Only, I can only hit the ball that way. It will always start in that direction, and all I have to do is make sure that I... Um, I just apply the protocol, the ball always starts there. And guys, I said it the other day, and I'll say it again, since I've been on the program, and it's probably in three and a half weeks now, I have not hit a ball over here. None. None. I hit 125 five irons uh, in a row, one to 125, between two flags that were 30 yards apart, or two markers. And, and really, the, the corridor was like about 14 or 15 feet the majority of them, but every one was in there. Because I aimed basically just a little left of centre and the shots that I just pushed just went a little right of right, um, but the good shots were just a little draw back to the, to the centre. But nothing started left and went left, so nothing ended up outside that left hand marker. So that's how good the swing is, guys. Really, that is how good it is. Okay, we'll just cut there, and I just want to check my uh, my audio. I've tried a couple of new settings today, just getting rid of the uh, the ambient noise, just cutting back on the gain a little bit. So, guys, I'll just have a look, and then I'll come back with video number two, and we'll hit a few shots. <laughs> 